On today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to go from this to that. We're going to be deep diving into how to organize your files and projects, best practices for naming conventions, and so much more. So stay tuned until the end, because I have an incredible time-saving tip just for you. Let's get into it. But the most important part to note is that this is my way of doing things. It's not the way of doing things. There's many ways you can figure out your project organization or file structure, but this is a way that has worked really well for me throughout my career, working at agencies and in big companies. So let me show you how this is done. The way I organize my folders are by clients. I would start with all the client names. So first let's start with client A. And then within that, I would have the year of, uh, you know, currently the year you're working on. Then I would have the documents that are your like contract. So in this case, I have a master service agreement with my clients. Then I have brand assets and that would be documents that I would get from the brands themselves. So documents, a brand guy, logos, fonts, photos, anything, right? Essentially anything that the brand will give me, uh, I would organize into this folder so that I can have access to it for future projects. Then I have a third folder, which is all my projects. Within that folder, what I do is I name my projects as an abbreviation of the client name, the project title, the year, then the month, and then the day. So once you start going into more projects, you're gonna you know, start duplicating this folder and so on and so forth. And the year will keep those projects in order so that you know uh, the later days will be on the bottom and so on and so forth. So uh, let's dive into this folder. Inside this folder, you'll see I have a project order, which again is part of the documents where you know I send out a project order that details the scope and the outline and all that. So that goes in there. My invoices, any references that I might get from the client for that specific project or references from myself that I look up. And then we come into the source files. Under source files, I have my assets that are specific to those projects only. And these could be, you know, anything from images, vector uh, files, logos, fonts, etc. Right. Uh, even within the video, you can see I have my raw files and my select files. Then I split my projects into two categories, design and video. And within these two, for example, in design, I work with Illustrator, Photoshop, InDesign. And then in video, I primarily work with After Effects, Premiere and Cinema 4D. Right. There's plenty more. For example, I also use Audition to record audio. So in those specific cases, I might have a different folder. Again, this is not set in stone. This is simply my general guide where I start off every project. Another tip that I always include in my template folders is template files. So when you come in here, you'll notice I already have a PSD file with the same uh, naming structure as the main folder and same for AI. And then for example, uh, After Effects and Premiere, they all have the same template file. And then you can already automatically start working off of this file. And I'll show you a tip from that file later on in the video. This is already set up for you to like start right away as soon as you're going to organize your files, put them in the right place and then start working. And that'll save you a lot of time in the future. Then once you're working on the files, you want to make sure you put in all your review files that are going to be sent out to the client in your review folder. And again, I have my design, my video and my audio. And in this case, for example, I might have some high compressed or high res or compressed videos that I share with the clients. And again, these might be just me saving them there. I will share the video with the client on a platform, you know, like frame.io or something like that, if it's a video. But this is where I keep all my files uh, for, for review. Once they pass the review phase, I will move them over to the final folder. And this is final only when it's approved, signed off, paid for, completely done, right? Sometimes I might get clients or projects where I have to deliver the project files. So if I get that request from a client, I will collect all the files and the, the files that are used within the project. So for example, the Premiere file, and I make sure to collect all those audio files, video files that are specifically used for that file, collect them and put them in here and then zip them so I can deliver to the client. Then I will have my design files, deliverables, 
then video, again, high res or compressed, and the audio files. That's it for the main folder. And again, this will vary on a per project basis, but you get the idea of what this can start to look like. So here's an example of how I would set up my folder for a specific client. I'm gonna make this up. Let's say I'm gonna be working with Apple, right? So I would come in here and name this Apple, right? Then we would set the year, so 2024. Then, you know, I would put in my folders and all my assets. Then I would come into the first project and start renaming this. So Apple's a short name, so I might just keep Apple. Let's say if you're working with Microsoft, it could be MSFT. So you can, I normally abbreviate all the files so that it's easier to reference. Then I'm gonna make up a project title. For example, let's say Apple uh, Alpha One Project, right? Then we rename this to 2024 then the day, the, the month, and then the day, right? So that's how I would start my project, right? And then I would start just working off all these files. Here's a quick tip on how to save some time with these folder structures. I use an app called Better Re Find Rename. And this is a version of renaming your files similar to what Finder has. So if we come here where you select files and you can come in here and select rename and you can start changing, you know, more specific things. But Apple's rename is very limiting uh, because it's mainly designed for sequences of files. Like if you have, you know, uh, a lot of uh, PNGs for like a time lapse uh, video and you have a lot of files and you want to rename them in a sequence and order number, this is good for that. But this program, a better finder rename is so advanced, but yet so simple. It lets you basically rename and change any of these features, right? So in this case, I'm going to show you a quick example of just simply renaming text in the whole folder all at once. So what I want to select is replace text. And then what we're going to do is drag that folder into this, right? So it'll read all the files and subfolders in that folder. So I want to rename all my files to this structure, right? So I'm going to copy that, then come in here and then put that in there. And then let's find one of our design files, copy that, which is the standard and then we're gonna place it in replace. So we wanna replace this anywhere with this, right? So you'll see it automatically found the, the only four files that are named like that and how it'll replace them. So if I click on perform renames and then rename all, you see it confirmed four file names were changed. Okay, so now we can quit this and you see automatically my Illustrator file changed names, my Photoshop file changed names, my After Effects file already changed names and the Premiere file. So that's the beauty of having this folder structure and the naming structure, which is, which is important because you'll be able to share files with someone else and maintain that order. And also it'll organize your own files to maintain that structure. Remember these project files that I already have set up? Here's another incredible time-saving tip that I always set up. Since I know, again, that I'm going to be working with all these uh, programs, what I do is I come in and create template files that are already set up with a similar folder structure inside. So let's check it out. I have my After Effects opened up here. And if I come into that folder and I open this file, you'll see it automatically loads an empty project with my folder structure. So if I open these up, you'll see it already has everything I need to start organizing all my assets and folders. And this keeps it consistent for when I'm sending off files, when I'm working collaborative with another team, or if I'm working on a big project with multiple team members, this keeps everything in the same place, super organized and makes it consistent and easy to find. So again, I can close this uh, project and uh, you know, this is always going to be a uh, template file so I can just click again and reopen it. And that works the same with my Premiere file and my other files. So one final tip I want to talk about is when you're delivering your files, let's say you're, you create a video 
and you have to deliver your high res and compressed versions. The way I find is the best way to make sure everything is consistent is making sure the naming convention on the files is correct. So if I'm delivering a high res video file, again, with our example, I'm going to name it the client's name, the project name, the date, the codec that I use to compress, the frame rate, and then the, old, the last uh, text is if it has like subtitles or captions, or if it's the clean version. So I'll normally deliver both. And if I'm doing a compressed version, then the same deal, right? I will have my uh, H.264 frame rate, text, and clean. So that way, whenever you're delivering the files, you can make sure the whole list of files that you're working with are clean and consistent and easy to understand what files which, and you're not naming them final, 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 dot one, whatever. So this keeps everything super tidy and easy to understand for the clients. As promised, thank you for sticking with me until the end. Below is a link where you can download a copy of my folder structure free for you to use. Now you can be super organized with all your files. If you found this video helpful, I would greatly appreciate it if you could like it and subscribe. Also, don't forget to comment below if you have any questions. I would be happy to help you. Thanks for watching.